Whenever you're ready, I am Laurel Lane. Okay, um, my name is Barbara Ussery. I teach at New Hanover County Schools in North Carolina at Castle Hayne Elementary, fifth grade. Good. So first question, how does this lesson connect to and build on students' prior skills and knowledge, what was taught before the lesson, and what will come after it? Um, this lesson builds on students' prior knowledge because um, multiplying by multi-digit numbers is a, first of all, multiplication and multi-digit or multiplication is a focus of third grade. It starts off as a primary focus in third grade. And then it builds through models and conceptual understanding through fourth grade where they're starting to really look at the base 10 uh, approach. In fifth grade, it's expected fluency for fifth grade, which, which is to be able to multiply multi-digit numbers So what we're with the standard algorithm. So what we're looking for is to connect that conceptual understanding through um, non-standard algorithms such as area models or cluster models um, or partial products and then building that conceptual understanding into be able to apply it to a standard algorithm. The mistake that many children make when they're looking at standard algorithms is that if they're multiplying 213 times 5, they'll say 5 times 3, 5 times 1, 5 times 2, as opposed to paying attention to the place value of the 5 times 10 and 5 times 200. So by going back and building that conceptual understanding um, through area models or cluster models, it helps the children see that partial product and to connect that precise language to the standard algorithm. Talk about the standards or cluster targeted in the lesson. What did you do to make the lesson reflect the full intent of that standard or cluster? Um, the, the cluster is to be able to perform operations on multi-digit numbers and then it goes in further into the fifth grade standard where they're going to specifically um, perform multiplication on multi-digit numbers. What I did to support the cluster as well as the standard is that I once again brought it back to the point where we were discussing the conceptual understanding of what it means to multiply by place values by breaking it down into their uh, base 10 units and then being able to bring it down to single digit computation um, that the children could do mentally and then addressing the base 10 um, numbers so that they could then think about if I'm doing 200 times 2, I can consider 2 times 2 is 4, but then also consider the fact that it's hundreds, so it's 2 base 10 units. So I'm going to add on the two zeros for the 2 base 10 units for 400. And that is what um, the beauty of it is with this standard, is that we're really addressing that conceptual understanding of multiplying by place value, and when they're multiplying using the standard algorithm, that they're still paying attention to that place value, even though they may be calling it single digit um, numbers. Which of the core action indicators do you think this lesson best exemplified? Um, I personally think, uh, as far as the core action indicators, I think that the one that is best exemplified is, in this is core action three, because I have provided the opportunity for the children to uh, spend a great deal of time talking to each other and explaining their thought process and um, having that constructive struggle as well as math discourse where they are saying, well, I got this, I got this, well, let's talk about how we both went about it and talk about where um, a misconception may lie or where we agree and then um, work together to come to a consensus. Discuss how this lesson illustrates the shifts required by the CCSS. The shifts are addressed by this lesson because what I started off looking at is what is a focus. The focus for this lesson is the um, expected fluency of multiplying uh, multi-digit numbers in fifth grade. It's our expected fluency. Uh, the multiplication builds strongly from third grade on, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and it's a progression of skills. So by still looking at the idea of multiplication as repeated addition, the idea of multiplication using a non-standard algorithm as far as a, an array or a area model um, or a cluster box, that leads to the discussion and the precise language that needed to be used in fifth grade to be able to um, apply that to a standard algorithm. 
Um, the rigor is involved when we're looking at, um, once again, building that conceptual understanding, but then using d um, more complex problems where the children have to work through the problem and decide what is happening to the numbers and what would be an appropriate approach to take to the numbers as well as an estimation. Um, I, we had a child who came up with an answer uh, when she was multiplying two numbers uh, that were going to round to 20, she came up with an answer over 900. I was able to talk her through that, of talking about the rounding process and would that even seem reasonable when they both rounded to 20 as an answer it should not be over 400. So by being able to do that and have that constructive struggle with her and get her to articulate what was going on, I believe that the, uh, the rigor was addressed. How did you teach the content of a lesson prior to the CCSS? What is the same and what is different? Prior to the Common Core uh, state standards, I um, taught multiplication pretty much by standard algorithm. We talked about multiplying the numbers and by place value, and I tried to get them to say, if they're multiplying 213 times 5, I tried to get them to say 5 times 3, and then 5 times 10, and then 5 times 200. What I was running into was that they didn't understand what those place value positions meant. The Common Core State Standards has required us to break it down back to that conceptual understanding because it's given us the opportunity and the time to go back and make sure the children have that number sense and the place value system intact. Um, the concept of place 10 and understanding what happens when you multiply by 10 um, and what happens when you divide by 10 will also then transfer into um, decimals and that is something that's um, needed for fifth grade as well. And having a strong sense of the number system, the base 10 number system and number sense is crucial for fifth grade to be able to apply that standard algorithm. I also was not as collaborative in my approach prior to Common Core State Standards. The students talked to each other, but not to the degree that they do now, because it wasn't a situation, it was very procedural. It wasn't a situation where they were explaining their thinking, where they would, where they would do that through a um, conceptual model, such as an area model, or an array, or um, something along that line, a partial product model. So the Common Core State Standards have in my opinion, made it much more concrete because of the fact that the children now have that conceptual understanding to apply to the standard algorithm. How did the students handle the lesson? Did they understand the mathematics of the lesson? Uh, I believe the students understood the lesson well. There were times when we had some misconceptions going on. There were some times when they um, asked for help, and I appreciate that they asked for help. They would ask when they got confused. And what it was a situation, once again, was going back to old habits of not paying attention to the place value system. And each time when I talked to them, I would discover that they were saying, once again, if it was you know, 213 times 5, they were saying 5 times 3, 5 times 1, and they were writing down 5 as opposed to 50. And so what we were the, when they were trying to do the partial products, they weren't coming up with an appropriate answer. So we had to go back and talk about what was happening in that problem, what they were in fact multiplying. So that was um, good to see that we still needed to go back because I tend to think that they have that under control until I try to get them to articulate it. So by listening to their conversations, I know that there's a small group that I need to go back and rework that with some more. Explain how you differentiated in the lesson. Did all students have opportunities to work on grade level content? All students were working on grade level content uh, as far as the um, fifth grade level math problem. Um, they were working on they were working on uh, models that they would also see in the third grade and fourth grade to bring back that conceptual understanding to ensure that they could employ that those skills into their fifth grade standard algorithm. 
Um, the children are also grouped in a Kagan structure where there is a four block of students and there is a high high, a medium high, a medium low, and a low at each table setting. This provides the children the opportunity to have support for um, each other and to give the opportunity to listen to another child's mm -hmm. point of view and another child's ideas. Um, by making the lessons so collaborative, the children hear from each other how to go about solving the problems. Um, I've also had the opportunity to be able to go and visit specific children at their tables and talk through what's going on with them. And I feel that um, not by not clustering them together at one table, this allows me to visit each table and talk to children who I think may have it, but when I talk to them, I discover you know, it might even be one of those high, high kids that's having a misconception. So it's one of those things where I think it's really strong to not cluster all of your low children together and just sit with them. By spreading them out the room, you're going to not only visit them, but you're also going to listen to what is happening with your other students. Which behaviors from Correction 3 did the students best exemplify? I'm going to look back at Correction 3 real quick. In Core Action 3, um, the children are really, with this particular problem and this particular lesson, I believe this is a strong structure for it. The children have been set up in a situation where they're going to be talking to each other. They're going to be experiencing their math discourse with each other, as well as explaining um, and supporting their own choices. Uh, they're asked to be able to make models where they're going to um, have someone else interpret them. And I believe that that makes the children think more deeply about their, um, about their process. Uh, the classroom is set up in a structure where they're used to working with each other. We have set norms for how they are to interact with each other. And because of that, I think that they're, they're very proficient at it now. When I first got them at the beginning of the year, they barely talked to each other. So it's nice to see now that they're so willing to get partners and work with other people, um, that they feel very comfortable with that. Everyone's willing to share and, and you know enjoy that process. Um, as far as the questioning that I do, I try to go around and talk to each group about where they are at that, in the problem at that particular time. They will ask questions when they have them. They will raise their hands and call me to their table. But generally, I circulate through the tables and ask them questions about their process at that particular point that they're at. If I do see a hand up, I go over to that table and try to make sure that they're still persevering through. By the fact that they're working together, it requires them to both be responsible for the work. and they. Um, are equally responsible and they know that I will come up and talk to either of the partners and expect them to explain the process. Um, the fact that they each have their own notebook and they keep their materials together for themselves also allows them that reference tool to go back and reference previous work. We have made um, math notebooks and journals and they act as our own individualized um, textbooks since many of the textbooks now are not Common Core aligned, we decided we were going to make our own. So this is a ready reference tool for them and provides them the opportunities to go back and reference when they need it, as well as a study guide and a connection for their families, um, which we have found to be very supportive with the, uh, with the notebook model. Reflecting on the lesson, what worked well and what might you do differently? Uh, reflecting on the lesson, what went well was that the, um, the children participated extremely well. Um, they were actively engaged, they were working with the math, they were using the precise language, their vocabulary was rich, um, their problem solving models were strong. Um, they took a little bit longer with the number talks and um, they still feel a little um, unsure when they discover that they've made an error. And as much as I try to tell them how wonderful it is that they still share, I'm working on them not feeling defeated and turning all red. But well, I think we all naturally get embarrassed. Um, but we're working on trying to build up children when they do make mistakes and talk it through and explain where their misconception was. So I want to work some more on that. Um, I also would like to look at, uh, today, they, um, 
they, we were a little rushed for our, our, for our model drawings and they didn't do as many varied models as they normally do. So what I want to do is um, try to always make sure that I allow enough time for them to solve it a second way, which is what we would typically do. Um, but today we did not have the time to do that. So I want to always make sure that I allow that opportunity. I'll revisit this lesson on Monday and we will go back and solve the problem a second way and share out our um, strategies using the document camera. Were there any surprises or unexpected behaviors? Were there any surprises or unexpected behaviors? I was surprised um, when I was having the children articulate how they were multiplying using the standard algorithm that they were still saying things, um, if I was doing 213 times 5, if they were still saying uh, 5 times 3 and then 5 times 1 um, instead of 5 times 10. That, that did still surprise me because we've worked so much at this point with that. I would expect that they would be able to naturally articulate that. Um, so that surprised me and I'm going to realize that I need to pull a small group in to rework that. Um, it also surprised me that they all cho chose to do the standard um, Singapore model, bar model. Um, that, But it's something that they know that I go to naturally, so I think that they were trying to please me and all did the same model. Um, normally they would have several different models, uh, but I really do believe that they were trying to you know, please me and do what they know the models that naturally come to me. Uh, I always try to stress for them that it's not about getting someplace one way. There are multiple ways to get there. As long as your model works, it's the way to go for you. It may not be the most efficient way to go, but that is not what we're necessarily looking for. We're looking for the fact that your model works for you, it makes sense for you conceptually, and that you will persevere through it. So I enjoy when the children are sharing their various models. You're done. Yay.